We are continuing with a series on removing idols of our lives. And the biggest idol that we know is money. So many of us, with knowing or without knowing, easily become enslaved because we rely upon money, what money can do. Money has a power. So instead of relying upon Jesus, we tend to rely upon money and what money can do. And to not be enslaved by money, but instead we want to enslave money and trample upon it and bring it back to God and use our money to serve true living God. And we want to continually worship our God. He is indeed our master. And we want only our God be the master in our life. And to do so, the very first step will be allocating 10% of our income, the blessings that God gives us in honor of Him. And because God said that tithe belongs to the Lord. And also, we are not bound in all law, but it is a, a token of our love for Him, and it is expression saying to the Lord, you are my Lord, my, not the money. But in the meantime, also, as we do that, God promises us with a full peace. If you can remember first, by giving tithe, that we can receive a passage or passport to return back to God spiritually. And then, second P will be providence. God will abundantly provide for our need, he promises to open the door of heaven and pour out his blessings. And then third P will be protection. As we give tithe to the Lord that he said he will protect our field, he will protect our hands, and our works. And also lastly, the P is prestige. As we honor him with our tithe that he will elevate us as a people with the honor and respect among the nations. And that first 10%, we allocate it, it belongs to the Lord. But is it only way that we can manage as a good stewards of Jesus Christ and utilize it for the sake of God's name and for his kingdom? There is more. There are tons of ways that we can receive a financial blessings and financial freedom and we can use our money to honor God and not only fulfill our needs and our desire but use it for the sake of serving other people. There are kingdom financial principles written all over the places in the Bible. Some have researched the entire Bible that anything that pertaining to the faith that are about 215 times mentioned in the Bible. And anything that is pertaining to salvation, that are about 218 times mentioned in the Bible. But anything that pertains to money, mammon, guess how many times are mentioned in the Bible? 2,048 times in the Bible. God talks about money. Why is it? Because he needs the money? No, absolutely not. All the gold and silver and all the possessions, entire universe and more so belong to God. He created it all. But where our treasure is, our heart is also. He is mindful of our heart. The way we use money, the way we give money matters to the Lord. And also because money plays such vital roles in our life. And that's why he has given us instructions and he has laid down the principles of how we can overcome from enslavement of the money. Instead, we can utilize money to fulfill our needs and also use it for kingdom's sake. And today, we want to take a look at the Bible, how we can sow more and we can reap more. Just like a farmer. He goes to his vineyard or to the field. He scatters the seeds, hoping to receive multiplication of what he's sowing. And as we know, a corn, a seed of corn can be put on the, under the ground 
and it can multiply how many times that we don't know how many years we'll have one stock, but one year of corn will have between 5 to 1,000 kernels. That's somehow quite a multiplication. Just like that, in our life, that farming principle, that principle of creation still applies. Whatever we saw in the book of Galatians chapter 6 says, whatever we saw, we will reap. Whatever you saw, you will reap. You reap wheat, you will reap wheat. Did I say reap wheat? <laughs> Whatever you sow wheat, you will reap wheat. <laughs> you sow rice, you will reap rice. You sow barley, you will reap barley. Not only in the ground, in the land, but also in our life, in the spiritual aspect. Whatever we sow, we will reap. We sow love, we will receive more love. We sow compassion, we will receive more compassion. We show and sow mercy, we will receive mercy. And we sow money, we reap more money. There is a kingdom principle written all over from the Bible, and we want to examine such things because we want to learn how to manage as a good steward of Jesus Christ and utilize it to serve our God. Make money our slave and let it serve our true master, which is our God. That's what we are aiming for. So let's turn our Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. This is a billion dollar message. Your life can be transformed from this message and your finance will receive a freedom and victory if you abide in to this uh, principle. Amen? Praise God. And after you receive that blessing, give 10% to the Lord, minimum. And I will open to receive your gift too. <laughs> Just kidding. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. This uh, passage is about Apostle Paul writing letter to Corinthian church. He is encouraging the church members, why don't you prepare before I get to you a love offering for the church in Jerusalem because they went through financial difficulties. They had a famine. And the gospel came from Jerusalem. Spiritually, you are ministered by the Jewish people. And why don't you, with the material things, you bless Jewish people? So before I arrive to you, why don't you prepare because God loves the cheerful givers. And as he shares that, let's read verses 6 together. There is a principle, very simple, but it's important principle that applies to our daily living. Verse 6, let's read it all together. Begin. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. He's talking about money. As you Corinthians saw bountifully for the sake of the church in Jerusalem, you will reap bountifully. And we want to examine and read through and visit certain passages from the Bible, how and where we can sow more and we can receive bountifully. First, as we already talked about 10% tithing. Tithing is an obligation at the time, a channel to be blessed because it attached with a God's promise. And second way that we can invest, that we can sow more and reap more will be the money and financially how we serve our fathers, our mothers. Yes, when we serve our parents financially, God promises us that our life will be well and we will live long life. As we know in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 and 3, it says honor book of Ephesians chapter 6, honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. 
As we know, this commandment was given in the Old Testament, and it has a connotation when our parents get older, the role of our parents and the children changes. They were a provider. They were a protector. They raised us up, but when they get older, financially, we need to take a duty and responsibility to take care of them. Why? Because they gave us life. Partnered together with our God. We need to honor them financially. So God says when you serve your father and mother with the money, that you will be well. It has meaning to the financial blessings. Some people might say, Pastor Shine, that's good, and we want to honor our parents, that they make more money than myself. They don't need my money. Still, we can honor them. We can buy them gifts. If we are making money, there's income or there's a blessing from the Lord financially that we can honor them by month. Maybe what do they like? What do they need for sustaining good health? Maybe I will buy them vitamin C and honey. Honey is good for them. And they will be pleased. And they will well receive your sweet aroma of the gift. And also, if they are financially going through a very difficult time, maybe more percentage can be allocated. If you are living together with your parents, maybe there is negotiation how their money and your money combined together not only provide a living condition, but to honor them as well. But there is attached a promise from the Lord as we honor them. We cannot love without giving and without serving. We may give and serve without love. Our motivation might be just purely dutiful, but without giving, without serving, we cannot love. So we show our respect and love to our parents financially, and as we sow more, God will honor us and bless us some more. Third way we can sow more and reap more will be for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of his kingdom. As we seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, God said, I will add things you need. There's a promise right there. And also Jesus said in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30, he said, so Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left a house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands. There's a money, there's a property. For my sake and the gospels, who shall now receive a hundredfold now in this time. Let's read it again. It says a hundredfold, hundred times more now in this time, in this earth. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and the lands with the persecutions and in the ages to come, eternal life. For the sake of the gospel, for the expansion of his kingdom, for the preaching of the gospel, for the world mission, as we allocate certain percentages, certain money and soul in his kingdom, and God will return, be multiplied hundred times more. What kind of investment is that? Can you find a stock investment that guarantees 100 times? Is that 1,000 or 10,000 percentage in return? Absolutely not. But God promises and he keeps his promises. As a ministry, EM, last year with the Deacon Boards, we made a decision that our, church, our ministry will allocate 45% for the sake of mission and 10% for the sake of a rising generation, for our education department. And by grace of God, we've been keeping that promise. We only utilize remaining 45% for maintenance, for our pastor's compensation, and it has been steadily like that. But the amazing thing was, the month with our deacon board that decided to allocate 45% for the sake of world mission, immediately following month, our offering increased more than 33%. Praise God. No one manipulated our church congregation. 
I didn't implore upon you give more. No, we just simply came before the Lord and made that commitment. Before that decision, our EM offering average per month was $19,000. Immediately from that month on until today, the average has been more than $32,000. Praise God. His promise is true. And more so, God will continually multiply when our motivation and when we believe in His promise for the sake of saving souls that we allocate our finance and we invest upon it and see how much God multiplies. And there's another tip. This blessing can be doubled or multiplied even further if you allocate your money for the sake of salvation of the Jewish people, for the sake of Israel. Why? Because there's a double promise. He said to Abraham, those who bless you, I will also bless you. If you give money for the sake of salvation of Israel and God will return whatever we sow, we reap financial blessings upon you. Even in the midst of our congregation, you will hear testimonies from brothers and sisters who have given for the sake of Israel and they received more financial blessings. Once with my wife, we laid on the Excel sheet. <laughs> it sounds more like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> S-H-E-E-T. <laughs> and what we did was, on the left column, we indicate the date and amount we give for the sake of the gospel. And on the right column, randomly how God gives us in return. We were amazed. Try it. Even for a month or three months, I guarantee you, you'll be amazed. Sometimes people will give you a gift randomly. Unexpected money will come. Don't only rely upon your own job. God's hands are not shortened. He has multiple ways to bless you financially, and you sow more for the sake of the gospel, how God returns. It's amazing. It's amazing how many times he can do that. Then, fourth way is to sow more for the sake of the poor people. For the people who live life of poverty, we look around our surroundings you will easily find, even in our location, in the city of Fullerton, around our neighborhood, there are so many people financially struggle and wrestle with a daily survival. And if we decide to give for the sake of the poor people, there is God's promise. And let's look at a few of them, because there are so many. As we give for the sake of the poor, God will return his blessings for us. One of them is the book of Leviticus. It's a commandment. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 22. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field when you reap, nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. God was always compassionate over fatherless, widow, and strangers. Because socially, there were the ostracized groups. They had a hard time surviving. So God was God of the weak. We're always standing beside them. And God says, when you reap your harvest, leave the corners so that poor people can come to your field and glean and gather those leftovers. So in our income, when we have 100%, 10% belongs to God and give as a tithe and remaining, maybe we can allocate leftovers, two or three percent, depending upon how prayerfully we consider and allocate and look for the people in nearby my network, find them and provide them. There's a movement going on in Korea amongst the Christians and the churches. They say 5K, it means in my location five kilometer circumference and I look for those people who are poor and I give the money for them. So what they do is they have a small tiny box 
and they put it on the dining table. So every time they have a dinner with the family members, the children will chip in their coins, and the mother, father will put in certain bills and things like that. And they collect it for about a month or two. And when it's filled, and they will prayerfully consider whom they want to bless and give. And amazingly, God will return the blessings. More we sow, more we reap. And I will also do randomly because we need to be careful. We don't want to hurt their pride. And we may want to do it secretly or creative ways and wise ways to still respect them at the same time and provide their end means. What I once did was I would put money in the envelope and knowing that certain brother was financially and severely struggling, and I knew his car and we go to a parking lot, instead of giving him this money directly, which can be a little bit sensitive, and I will put it inside of his car with a letter, simple letter written, typed, because he may recognize my handwriting, and God convicted me and so forth, and it's from the Lord, and use it for your need. And you already heard my testimony that we have a given Toyota Corolla, which was about $6,000 in value for a poor seminarian who was going to his school by bus. And we blessed him freely with this car. And short time later, God blessed it. Even until today, for about eight to nine years, every three years, my friend, a deacon, will bless me with a new car, Honda Accord. Insurance paid. What a multiplication. When we saw for the sake of the poor, God indeed keeps his promise. You know, another promise God said is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 17. It says it like this. He who has a pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Isn't it amazing? Our God who possesses everything, he's a creator. He holds all the silver and all the gold. But yet, when we give for the sake of the poor, God takes it as if he's borrowing money from us. He's indebted to us. But the thing is, he's a rich guy. He doesn't delay in his payment. He will immediately pay us back. That's his promise. That's astounding. We can make our God, who is the creator, our debtor. Amazing. There are other promises, multiple times written in the Bible. And another group we can consider, along with the, the people who are poor, is there are certain people who will pledge themselves to be poor for the sake of the gospel. That are simply people like missionaries and the pastors. And in Old Testament, we had a priest and Levites. They did not have a secular inheritance from the Lord. God himself was their inheritance. There are people in the life who have pledged their life to lead such a poor life for the sake of the gospel. You know, I was pondering about whether to include this group or not because it may sound self-serving because I'm the one of them. But for the sake of teaching you, for the sake of loving you, because when you really indeed apply this to your life, God will truly honor you and bless you. I personally experienced it. Not only when I gave and served the pastors and missionaries myself, but when those people who served me, I, I witnessed them as well. The simple one was recently, one of our EM family, they purchased a house and invited our entire family. Yes, including four children. They served us with a dinner with a Korean barbecue, Galbi. Nowadays, it's so expensive. $7.99 per pound. <laughs> they had a full aluminum tray of Galbi and served us. And we worshipped, and I was really pleased with their intention because they wanted to honor God first by inviting pastor to worship him, thanking him for 
allowing them to have this wonderful house. And then they plan to invite their other friends and so forth. But following Sunday, I heard a wonderful testimony from the wife. And she said she, their family was immediately invited by one of their neighbors. And they also served garbage. But after the party was over, they had some leftover garby, and the, the neighbor wanted to treat them. Why don't you take some uh, to go with you? So she thought, you know, maybe one plate, garby kind of thing. But they brought out entire aluminum tray full of garby for the couple. So it was more than what they saw for the servant of God. And immediately, God will return the blessing to them. It was a kind of token for them how God was pleased with their motivation. And once, many years ago, I was teaching a couple of brothers, English-speaking brothers, second-generation Koreans, with a one-to-one -one discipleship. Back then, I was still Chondosa, and I, it was about time for me to get ordained. And I had to fly to Washington, D.C., but you know, as a GMI is, church doesn't provide any airfare. We had to pray. <laughs> but this brother who owned the sushi restaurant was moved by God and came to us to bless us. We will pay your airfares and also give you some more allowance. And I, he also uh, gave us money so that I can buy a suit. You know, KM pastors wear suits oftentimes. But an amazing thing happened. God honored his giving. In that same month, randomly, Orange County Magazine will come to them and observe the restaurant and will go back and appoint his restaurant one of 10 best sushi restaurants in Orange County. After that article, so many customers came to his restaurant. Whatever he saw got multiplied many, many more times. Praise God. I will expect a louder. <laughs> Just because a God blessed another person, that doesn't mean you don't want to say amen. <laughs> so there are ways so that we can sow. Just like a farmer, the more we sow, the more we reap. Through tithing and through serving our parents, and also for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of serving the poor people, we can continually sow more and reap more. But as a farmer, not only we sow, but there are other activities that we need to engage to expect greater harvest. What is it? We need to pull the weeds out. The land, the soil will not only possess the seeds and have a plants come out, there will be weeds and you need to cultivate the land and water them and have a sunlight coming in to your field. So how do we pull the weeds in our life to have a financial freedom and enjoy and use your money to serve our God? First, we need to pull the weeds of debts. We need to pay off the debts immediately. That has to be one of our top priority as we utilize our finance. As long as we have a debt, even though in a jar, if you have a hole and you want to pour in the water, because of that hole, water will leak out. If you have a pipe and there's a hole in it, no matter how much water with a large pressure goes up, the hole will leak out the water. No matter how much God wants to bless you financially, if you are indebted and you have a debts in your life, because of that, will have an increased interest rate. And through that, God's blessing will leak out. God said to not owe to anyone anything. In the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 8, God says to us, Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has a fulfilled the law. In other words, do not be indebted with anything except love. Let other people love you and you love them back. Otherwise, financially, don't owe anyone anything. 
You know, it's a, such emphatic statement when you read the original language. It's a repeating itself. To no one and to nothing you shall owe anything. Literal translation, it sounds like that. And also, even another statement in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 7, I believe it is. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. As soon as we borrow money, we become enslaved to that person. But in America, it doesn't help us. Because the American financial system is not a godly system, Period. Why? We are so indebted to credit companies. When we buy a car, we are bounded for five years with a payment. When we buy a house, we can be enslaved for 30 to 40 years. This financial system will enslave us. We spend hours, days, and years, and we die by paying the bill. Anyone whose name is a bill, no offense. Because even education, we need to get a college loan. But we determine today, as our family did, nine years ago, we made a commitment with my wife. No matter what happens, we will never ask men for money. We will only go to our master, who is a true provider, who is a creator. We will never ask people for financial help. Because back then, as assistant pastor, I was getting $1,400 per month. It was really difficult to survive monthly. So I will randomly ask my sister, can you lend us $300? And when we receive paycheck, I'll pay you back. That kind of pattern repeated. And I said to God, God, I'm your servant. Am I a beggar? I will never ask another person for the rest of my life, for the sake of help, I will only come to you. If you don't provide, we perish, we perish. We made a, that decision. Until now, with the four children, my wife not working, and I only receive, and from that portion, allocated for the mission, never, never, we ask a person for uh, financial help. God is a provider. God is a provider. You need to really seriously re-examine. When you are trying to buy a house, a new car, do you really need it? Is that only for show up? Because it's just like other people pursue after American dreams. As a Christians, do we need to pursue after American dreams? Absolutely not. We need to pursue after godly vision for the sake of saving souls, for the expansion of His kingdom, and we allocate our finance to expand his kingdom, and that's valuable. And that has eternal consequences. Why do we follow after the pattern of this world? American dream is a foolish one. If we have to allocate for car payment or house payment more than 50%, it's not wise. It's not wise. Just because the culture says so, that's not mean. It's godly. So the quicker we get rid of our debts, the sooner we become free and we can enslave the money to serve our true master. Second way we can pull the weeds out of our garden is limit money usage for the pleasures and wine and oil. We don't know how much we spend going out dining and use our money for entertainment, for pleasures, upon games, upon movies, and all of these things. We'll be amazed in a month if we calculate these money spent. But the Bible says, if we use our money for the pleasure and wine and oil, we'll be poor. Book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 17. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. I'm guilty of it because I love dining out. 
I have a compulsion. Whenever I have money, oh, I want a Korean barbecue. I want to take my family to here and there. And that's probably the most way that we waste our money. And as I share this, I r e d e t e r m i n e again not to waste our money. When there's a debt sitting in our accounts, we use and waste our money for the sake of pleasure. And the Bible says we'll remain as a poor man. But that's not God's intention. Third way we can pull the weeds out is get rid of laziness in our life. As long as we are lazy, no matter what kind of principle you apply, we will not be free financially. God cannot use lazy people. Even the world cannot use lazy people. A company is not necessarily looking for a lazy person. No matter how much talent e d you are, if you are lazy, your life will not be financially abundant. The Bible also says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 4, let's read the book of Proverbs every day. <laughs> He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. It doesn't matter whether we have our job or not, whether we are busy or not. Let us be diligent. If you have extra time, Because you are looking for a job, you are in transition, come to church. We'll give you many, many jobs. You can clean a t r i u m you can clean bathroom. We'll, there are a bunch of ways you can volunteer. And the way you serve the church, God may honor you and give you a better job. Praise God. As I conclude this message, Let me give you a sample how we can manage our finance. This I borrowed it from an organization called Nation Changing Movement and Network. And there are other finance, Christian finance teaching entities like a Crown Finance Class and those are by David Ramsey. Uh, he's one of his Financial Peace University and things like that. And one of them is says kingdom finance concept. So when we receive, let's say, $5,000, how much God gives us, there are ways that we have an obligation and we need to use it for our necessity and we want to utilize it for sowing and reaping. That's what we've been talking about it today. And those are certain things that I desire. The percentage is just randomly allocated. For example, obligation, tithing. It's also a blessing at the same time, obligation. It's a 10% given to God. Parents, the same way. It's obligation at the same time, we'll expect a blessing. Then, credit card payments. So many of us are bounded by credit card debts. We want to get rid of it as soon as possible and let You can make a determination today and cut the credit cards off. And car payment, mortgage, and tax, these are obligations. Why? Because those are the money that I use it for my need. It, we owe to other people. And then necessity, food, utility, children, if you have children, and their education, or you know, at least once or twice per three months, you want to go out and eat. <laughs> and for your car gas, and you want to save a little bit of money. Then with a 10%, or it's just a 10% is an example. If 10% is too much right now, you can at least try with a 2% or 3%. Try it. Take out a piece of paper. Write it down. If you give for the poor, for your parents, for the sake of Israel or kingdom sake, date it, amount it on the right column, and wait how God blesses you. It will be amazing. Amazing. We sow and reap. And God gives us more blessings. And you can utilize extra money to pay off your debts. Because that's our priority. Because we don't want any leakage. And then desire. If you want to have an iPad Air, you can have some, at least some money allocated and ask God, would you bless it? But if we utilize sowing and reaping principle, 
it may, you may, we may be amazed how quickly God will bless us. And among these are financial institutions who teach us the Christian principles. One thing that I find common, because in American finance system, we are being deceived. Why? Because we use a plastics. When you go to gambling, the reason why they can waste their money away is because instead of using bills or coins, they change the money into plastic chips. So they don't think it's money, so they waste them. Just like that, with the credit cards, we waste our money so easily. It's so difficult to plan things out. So their suggestion, and I believe, and I want to apply to my life as well, to discipline us, it will take severe discipline. With the determination, with God's help, we can do it. Let us be financially freed, set free, use money as a slave, our slave, to serve our God, not only to meet our needs. The way is, when we receive salary, change it to all cash, to $100 bills, and put it in the envelopes. I'm being serious. And people apply this principle. They're very successful. So there's a, one envelope called obligation. Car payments, tithe, parents, you know, mortgage, and so forth. You put all the money that are for obligation. Then you put next, necessity. Can we show that, that slide again? So for food, uh, education, utility, we put all the cash. And then, next one, this is our farming, planting, sowing and reaping. For Israel, whatever you prayerfully consider, however Holy Spirit leads you and you make a decision for the sake of India, whatever it is, you put it here. Then, this is a desire. You want to have a nice dress, a car, and things like that, you put seed, investment, and see how this will swell up as you do sowing and reaping. And when you do that, you will determine, our determination is never be tempted when this runs out, let's say, necessary envelope runs out and you don't have any food, money to buy food for next week. Starve. Don't borrow money from your obligation. Don't cheat. Just go into a refrigerator. You'll find leftover food. You can probably survive another five days to waste the leftover food in the refrigerator. If we do this within about six months and discipline ourselves, this discipline will require such a determination. And we overcome our life next 20, 30, 40 years will be different. Will be life of freedom. Money will not be our master. Money will be our slave to serve us and to serve God. Praise the Lord. I want to conclude this message with a, one Bible verse, another one from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. There is one who scatters, yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. He who waters will be also be watered himself. When we think of finance is tight, mentally I'm negative, and we, we do hold it, and we don't know how to sow it, we will go into vicious cycle, continually live a life of poverty. But when we scatter, when we sow, when we be generous, when we give, when we water, we'll be watered back to us. Let's pray. Let's all stand up on our feet. Let's decide it together. No longer I want to be enslaved by money. I want to use money to glorify my God. I want to use my money to serve Him and serve my need and my desire. It takes a discipline because we used to be enslaved by it so long. 
we need a gospel at heart. So let's cry out in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Dear Father, we thank you so much, Father.